Good morning, church. How's everybody doing? Glad you all made it out in the rain and through the floods. Let's stand and sing praises to our Lord this morning.
above the 
are so good. Lord, just help us to trust you. To take those steps. <laughs> Good morning, Mountain View. Good morning. It is Baptism Sunday. Really? <laughs> there we are. We had planned a picnic today. It's not happening. Obviously, we're not going to be at Feather Lake. The good news is that we do, you get to see all the baptisms that happened so far today. We got them all on video. Our IT team, our, our AV team, they're on top of it. They have the videos ready for you, so that's exciting. And I, I get to walk around in shorts, barefoot, dripping wet, and it's perfectly normal. This is great. Oh, uh, by the way, we got a class coming up this week, How to Build an Ark. Uh, Pre-reading is Genesis chapter 6. If you're interested, no. Sorry. Keys to Freedom class. That is really happening. That is on Wednesday, starting this week. It's a powerful class. If you're in a wrestling match with this world... You need to consider it. There's still a few books left, I believe, so you can still get signed up for that. If you have already signed up, make sure you pick up your book. Uh, they are asking that you have chapter one read when you get there Wednesday. It is a revolutionary chapter. It is powerful. So you are actually in for a treat with that reading assignment. <coughs> also coming up next Sunday, not today, but next Sunday, 1 o'clock, there is an interest meeting for Uganda. If God has been tugging at your heart, if you feel a lean to possibly reach out to the Nubian people with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, this is an interest meeting. If you show up, that does not mean you have a plane ticket to go. So no commitment. That means you are interested and you want more information. So prayerfully consider attending that one. Also, if there's any revolution youth in the room today, do not go to Feather Lake tonight. You will be here. Revolution will be here tonight at 6 o'clock, so just make sure that's out there. Don't miss that. Um, last Sunday, we had a neat something different, that prayer and worship Sunday, prayer and worship service. Just feeling the Spirit of God move through the room, awesome time of worship and the praying together as a community. It was powerful. But don't feel like we have to do something different to have a prayer and service, prayer and worship service. Because if you think about it, that opportunity is in that program every week. Because when you pick up that program, there's a connection card. And that connection card lets you connect and stay in touch. Helps us stay in touch better as a church family. And there's a prayer card so we know how to pray together. Because every week, staff, ministry leaders, life group leaders, prayer teams are praying with you. Just because somebody's not sitting next to you holding your hand doesn't mean they're not praying that same accord with you when you put in those prayer cards. And that offering envelope is an act of worship. When we give back to God that, that first fruit of what he's given to us, we are worshiping. So that prayer and worship service is really packaged in that program for you every week. Don't miss the opportunity to connect with the church family and with the Heavenly Father in that way. If you are the person who sweats easily from the eyes, you may need some tissues as these videos go today. It's powerful. We've had, we've felt God here. We know he's here. And this, this, this is a time of celebration with this baptism. So let's, let's just take the moment to pray before we start. Father, you're here. There are more than two people in your name. You are in the midst. God, we just want to take a moment to invite you and say we want your spirit here. We want your presence here. God, this is a day where we celebrate those who have said no to Satan and yes to Jesus. Those who have said no to chains and yes to freedom in Christ. Those who say no to sin and its wage of death. And those who say yes to life everlasting with you. 
We celebrate that decision. We celebrate the obedience, the act of saying to the world publicly, I am dying to that old way in the waters of baptism and I'm living a new creation born again in Christ. God, I just ask that you just do that supernatural work you do in our heart that we don't negate the power of what happens with a baptism. We don't overlook that. Father, just have your way with the Spirit today. Speak to each of us as you need us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Mountain View. Anybody happy to be here? Yeah. I know I am. Man, I'm glad. To, one, one perk is that I don't miss any services. And so days like today, it's just blessing upon blessing upon blessing. I couldn't think of a better way to end the series we've been calling Better, Jesus is Greater. Anybody believe Jesus is Greater? Are you experiencing living that in your life? I hope so. Well, the testimonies today just continue to bear witness to the fact of the greatness of our God and the blessing of sending Jesus Christ to be with us. The baptism celebration, yes, it was going to be at Feather Lake today, but that place has rained out. they got plenty of lakes around there right now. You pick one to get baptized in, according to Melissa and Boots. But we talk about baptism, the symbol of baptism, that submerging into water, reemerging out of the water, the death with Christ, when we say, by faith, I'm surrendering everything I understand of myself, and all my brokenness to everything I understand of God through Christ. And I'm starting a journey of faith right there. Every one of us, I hope, recognize that we are sinners, saved by grace. Now, if you're a Christian, I'm speaking to you at that moment. You, have, you were a sinner. You, I won't say are a sinner. The Bible calls you a saint when you, get, um, when you become a Christian. So if you have a spouse, look at them and say, I'm a saint. I don't care what you thought about me this morning. I'm a saint saint that struggles with sin. So we do struggle, but because of the grace of God, so we have this opportunity in baptism to understand that every one of us has been washed clean. We're washed clean by, from sin and rebellion and shame and guilt. Does that make anybody happy to think, you know what, that's been taken away from me. That's why we're here. I don't know what else motivates you to get up on a Sunday morning when you could sleep in and enjoy the Lord. Why? Because he's the one that loves you more than anyone in this world ever could love you. He loved you enough to allow his son to die and the wrath of God to fall upon his son instead of fall upon you and me. This is a gospel that we not only worship, but we take out of these walls when we go. And so today I want you to hear the testimonies. And I appreciate the AV team today and live stream trying to work this all out because we had videos and live and unexpected and all this working together. So you get to kind of enjoy all of them and I have a short message in between. And so I want you to hear, first hear from Autumn Smith. She was already by video in the first service. She's baptized. It's short. Don't blink. Listen to her words of the innocence of a young woman who's saying, I love Jesus. Watch this. Autumn. Why do you want to be baptized? So I can show God I, I love him and I can listen to him. And when did you become saved? When I was five, I prayed to him and I said I love him. I want him to save my heart. And what is your favorite Bible verse? For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not be perished, but have eternal life. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you. <laughs> That is beyond precious. I love the innocence, the purity. And when I'm done, I'm done. There's nothing else to be said. Why is it that we, as we grow up, we complicate things? When Jesus Christ says, believe, and understand in the Greek, that word is so much bigger than the English language. It was a to believe cognitively in your mind, but to receive. There was the action within that word that we would reach out and embrace the one, Jesus himself. That's what this young woman is saying. Unexpected at the beginning of the first service, we were having the time of response. Mark Reshke, I believe, and I might be saying it a little bit wrong. Forgive me for that. Walked forward, 
and met Josh here on the side, and they were talking, and then I walked over, and he said, I want to be baptized. Just began to ask him about his walk with Christ and who Jesus Christ was to him, and what I heard and the questions, the pointed questions I asked was enough to say, you come on that stage right now, and you tell people what you just told me. And when he got on the stage, boy, I tell you what, that became a sermon in and of itself. But I want you to hear from Mark, who clothes and all, just like I'm dressed now, jeans and all, went into the water. But listen to what he had to say first about Jesus. Is Jesus Christ to you? Tell him what you told me. <laughs> I said he's my Savior, and he's not for me, he's not for you, he's not for just Christians. He's for everyone from the beginning of time. He, he put himself on the cross so we could live in freedom, true freedom, releasing our hearts from any angst or guilt or anything that might stumble us in the world, to just allow us to create a true relationship with God, that bridge that we've all sought, we've all longed for since the beginning of time, to reach heaven, our creator, our, our one. We are run, one with the Trinity. And we live through this life dragging our feet, stumbling over things and allowing that angst and that guilt and that, that sin to continue to control us, to run us. And until we open up and see, see he's there, he's always been there. And create that relationship with him to open up your heart with Jesus Christ. So I asked him, there's a whole lot more he told me earlier. But I asked him, I said, why do you want to be baptized today? What did you say? <laughs> because my mom, <laughs> her name is Faith. <laughs> and uh, I go, I live by faith. It's okay. <laughs> Mark, you've confessed your sin to Jesus. You asked him to be your Lord and Savior public decoration. I'm going to ask you if you want. Josh is right over there. I like Josh. <laughs> Go be baptized, brother. Absolutely. We're okay with the unexpected. When Christ is moving in your heart, I'm telling you right now, whether I don't care what I got on, Josh, we're ready again in this service as well if people are moved by that. Uh, then I'm going to, so the lights want to keep going on and off. Michaela Elias, John Rose, and Ashley McIntyre came in the second service and bear witness to where they have walked, where they've been, where they are today, and who Jesus Christ is to them. So one after another, so the lights don't have to keep going on and off. I just want you to listen to these powerful stories. I believe in this service, Ashley actually came back and on the third service to be here. So Ashley, I'm glad you're here to watch yourself bear witness to what Christ is doing. We celebrate with you as well. So guys, enjoy what you see. Stand close. Okay. My name is Michaela Elias. Um, most of you probably know me by my last just trust in Jesus and that gets you to heaven. And for me, that really didn't make sense because I knew what terrible things I had done and it didn't make sense that salvation was so easy. I remember when I was little, I asked my dad if all I had to do was trust in Jesus and he said, yeah, that's all you have to do. I proceeded to live my life thinking that just trusting and believing and knowing in God was enough. Um, to me, God was just a magical genie and that he just, you know, when, if you asked him, he just changed your life. I didn't actually fully give myself to the Lord. I was confused as to what I was doing wrong. I wanted to be a better person, but nothing really seemed to change. Um, all my life, I was basically a rebellious child. You know, if I wanted to do something, there was no stopping me. I was stubborn, and as I grew, there was tension growing between my parents and my other family members. But honestly, I lived in complete shame because I knew what I was doing was wrong. I pushed people away because I was afraid of being rejected. Although no one really rejected me, somehow I just, I was scared that there was just, I was gonna end up alone because I wasn't good enough. I couldn't keep friends because I was scared that they were gonna find out about my past. And when they did, they were gonna look down on me and they were gonna reject me. So I continued to lie to my parents and my family because I didn't think they would believe what was really going on. 
I wanted to be more like Jesus, but couldn't understand what I was doing wrong. When I was 15, I watched one of my best friends share her testimony. This was a girl that I honestly thought was perfect. I mean, she was a pastor's kid. And yet, she, I found out that she was struggling in a lot of the same ways that I was. However, the sermon that followed was what convicted me. When Pastor Mark said, I don't know what you've done, but I know what he did, and what he did covers anything you could ever done, brought me to tears. I understood then that salvation is not just a one-time commitment. I realized that every day I had to surrender my heart to God, and that's what I was doing wrong. I couldn't, I couldn't just ask God to change me. I had to change me. June 7, 2015 is the day I fully surrendered my heart to God. The past few years have been difficult. God has shown me a lot. He was not some magical genie that just magically changed you. I'm far from perfect. My favorite verse is Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is my favorite verse because it reminds me that when I fall short, fall short God will always be there and he remains faithful even when I'm not. The past few years, I've been blessed by people who have shown me not only the tough love, but also the warm love. I've also been blessed with people who have stuck by me and who are there for me even when I'm a liar <laughs> and even when I'm scared to tell the truth. Come here. I'm proud of you. I love authentic biblical community. Well, we can own our own stuff and know that that stuff that we're ashamed of is covered under the blood of Calvary. It's a beautiful thing to sit here, whether you're hearing somebody else or you're thinking about your own stuff, going, if I were even able to utter the things that were on my heart and mind, do I have the conviction in my heart to believe that he said that what happened on the cross of Calvary was enough to cover that? That's the gospel we celebrate today. Now, John, I had him get up, almost get up a moment ago. Where's John? The lights are bright. There he is. Come on. <laughs> Couldn't see over there. Help me introduce John Rose. Excited for you, brother. A little tad taller. Hi, I'm John Rose. I'm just going to read my little writing here to you. I originally accepted Christ when I was a child. My family started going to a Catholic church when I was a kid. And the priest of the church, Father Leon, was a loving man who accepted everyone for who they were, regardless of their past mistakes. He was not a typical Catholic priest. And the church that he ran wasn't a typical Catholic church. And his caring and willingness to accept people for who they were no matter what they had done, helped build the trust of God inside of me. So when I was a kid, I accepted Christ, and we went through these classes to get baptized. And the classes went over three steps for Catholic Church kind of baptism and First Communion and Confirmation. And they taught me what the importance was for sharing your faith. And typically in a Catholic Church, babies are baptized, so they don't have the opportunity to kind of do this, so they fill that step up with the confirmation process where you go in front of the church and you confess that you believe. <clears throat> now I just want to share with you a story of what I feel like it is to walk your journey with God. So a few months ago, I was preparing to take a licensure test for my job, so I had taken the day off to study, and I went to drop my son off at daycare, and on the way there, a small deer jumped out in front of my car, and I hit it, and this was just a teeny little deer, and all it did was crack one of my headlights out, but that was enough to just completely screw up my entire day. I had to spend all day on the insurance company figuring out where to take my car to get this headlight fixed, because the next morning I had to drive to Lynchburg at like 3 o'clock in the morning for this test, so I had to make sure that I could make it there safely. And when I finally got all of that worked out and I sat down and took the practice test, I felt like that deer as that test just ran over me and I just completely bombed it and didn't get any of the questions right. So I went to pick up my son from daycare after feeling pretty bad about myself because I failed the test. And when I got back home from picking him up, he just started crying and crying and crying inconsolably. And I had no idea what to do. And I was completely overwhelmed. 
and I just wanted to sit there and cry. So I decided to play him a song from my phone like I do sometimes when he gets really upset. So I hit random, and the song Sparrow by Jason Gray played. And if you haven't heard this song, it has a line that says, if he can hold the world, he can hold this moment. And when that part of the song played, it was like time stopped. My son stopped crying, and all of the fear that I had was gone. And that moment stayed with me through the next day. I finished the test, and I just was able to focus. And last week, after waiting for two months, I found out that I had actually passed the test. It was like... <laughs> And that story to me just kind of shows what the journey with God is like. When you're just like at a hopeless moment, he's there and he provides the hope. And the one thing that you need him to take away, in my case, was a crying baby. He did it. And it just made everything better for me because the baby stopped crying. Um, so I'm here today because I want to renew my commitment to Christ. And to do this, I want to be baptized by immersion. Originally, I was not baptized by immersion because it was in the Catholic Church. And I'm ready to commit myself fully to Christ and to grow spiritually. I'm committed to grow in Christ not only for myself, but for my wife and my son. And I want to lead my family by example and do everything I can to raise my son in a biblical community because I think that's critical for raising a child. And I want him to see me and all the people of this church the way that Father Leon taught me to see Jesus, which was a person who loves everybody, no matter what their problems are or their sins. Okay. God bless you. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. Wow. Do you guys enjoy this or what? Yeah. And I know I do. Absolutely. You don't have to listen to me talk every week. Man. Let these other people be blessing your socks off. Ashley McIntyre is going to come. Remember she came in with a friend the very first Sunday, and the friend said to me, uh, she might once be baptized one day. I said, I can't wait to hear the story. She goes, it's a long one. I said, I can't wait to hear it one day. And I've been blessed to hear how God and how Christ has been working in her life. So, Ashley, let me bring it down. When I am asked how my life before rekindling my relationship with God, the only word that I can muster up is dark. Um, I had a great childhood, amazing parents, and more opportunities than I could ever imagine. We did go to church growing up, but I don't feel that I had much of a personal relationship with God as we stopped going eventually. Any relationship that I did have with God deteriorated at the age of 17. Um, in the summer of 2007, I attended a party, which is where I was raped. After that, I lost myself, my faith, and my hope. The eating disorder that I had battled for going on 13 years now got worse than ever. I got depressed, I felt broken. My thought at the time was, what kind of God would allow something like this to happen to someone? After that, things continued to get worse. I was in and out of three toxic relationships. I looked for hope in the wrong places because I didn't realize that all I had to do was trust in God. All of those relationships grew abusive, mentally, physically, verbally, and emotionally. One of those relationships ended with an ex trying to kill himself and I. I constantly questioned why am I having to be the one to go through all this? I learned to cope on my own. I didn't think that there was anyone that I could truly turn to and trust with my deepest secrets. That brings me to why I got to where I am now, standing in front of all of you and God. In my most broken state, a neighbor, all of you know her is Desiree, inviting me to go to church with her and her family. At the time, my mindset was still different than what it was now. I ended up going the first time I stepped into a church since I was a child. When I left, I didn't feel any different than I had felt when I had arrived, but that would change. On March 28, 2018, um, the pain of the past got to be too much. And I bought a box of razor blades with the intent to kill myself and to end the pain. The day I planned to do it, I reached out one last time for help and prayed to God to help me because I couldn't do it anymore. After I prayed, I got the courage to reach out to a family friend, which in turn reached out to my parents and took me to the hospital. While in the hospital and sitting in the chapel, starting my journey through recovery, something happened. I found myself having an awareness that God was there with me. That was the second time I ever felt myself truly allowing myself to turn to God, trusting in him that he will be there to guide me down the right path and ultimately be the one to help me fully recover. 
I was, re I was released from the hospital the day before Easter. That first week home, I woke up one morning and I had awareness that he was there with me and I knew at that moment that I was ready to fully give myself to God, to trust in him entirely that he is the answer to everything I was searching for before. Since making this decision, I have a sense of overall peace. I have faith and hope that I will be okay, that God will walk with me through probably the hardest time of my life. It's because of him and my family and friends that I could overcome the darkest moments. Since then, he has been showing himself to me. Sometimes I catch on right away, and sometimes it takes a few hours to realize what he has done. Ultimately, I know he's there because of those moments, because I now feel it in my heart. After all this, I know that even though those moments through the age of 17 and to now were filled with darkness, that God ultimately has a plan for me, and with him walking beside me, I am now walking in the light and things keep getting better. I know that I've just reached, I've just started recovering and that rekindling my relationship with God will take baby steps, but I know that I will be okay because of it and that I will make it to where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. All right, shoo. Man, just because these things are recorded, do not make them any less powerful. And God is good, is he not? Amen. When you talk about the light, it's actually talking about the end of that message she gives in her testimony. Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Those who walk in darkness, man, we trust in light. We won't stumble. We're, we're not going to we'll fall. Yeah, we'll stumble. We're just not going to fall flat on our face. I thank God for Jesus. I don't know about you. I don't know where you stand today, but I just thank God that he is the light of the world. And when we trust our lives to him, he illuminates places of darkness, lets us see them before we get there. When we choose to rebel against him, the Bible says that we walk in darkness. It's just so dark, the Bible says, we don't even know what we're stumbling over. Now that's dark. It's so dark, we don't even know what we're stumbling over. That's a quote. So I thought about it in the scriptures in a little bit of time, and I don't have much. It's kind of a little snapshot. You can online later, when we get all these pieces together, you can hear the whole thing. But I thought about in the Old Testament, and I went back and studied through it and read through it, and was just like, okay, God, and that's why you led me here. And I thought about Jonah, a story that many of you are familiar with in here, but I don't presuppose that everyone is. He was a prophet of God who was called by God to take the message of forgiveness to a people that didn't deserve it. I want you to go to Nineveh, he said. I want you to go to the capital of the Assyrian Empire, a brutal empire that killed people, vicious people. It's quite possible that Jonah himself had experienced the vicious nature of this empire with people in his own family. And God tells him, I want you to go to that group of people, and I want you to bring my message of forgiveness to them. You know what Jonah said? You want me to go east out of Israel to Nineveh? Okay. He goes down to Joppa, catches a boat, and goes due west as fast as he can go. As a matter of fact, he goes so far west, he goes to Tarshish, which was a little town that was, had been developed, a little city that had been developed by the Phoenician Empire, part of the Phoenician group at that time. And basically, this is about as far as you could go west without getting in the water. He's almost saying to God, I'm in absolute rebellion. And I looked at this map and I found it online and I thought about the scripture and I realized here is a man who is absolutely rebelling against God. But I thought it wasn't just Jonah. It's you and me. You heard some of the stories that would have that some rebellion in it. Some of that, you know, God, I don't want to go where you want me to go. And I definitely don't want to love the people you want me to love. And that may be your story today. It simply was his. And I realized that there was a prodigal there that didn't want to live under the will of the Father. Now, what about you and me? I'm not just talking about thousands of years ago. I'm talking about right now, 2018. What about us? Because the Bible starts talking about that far off country to which he goes. He just wants to get away from God. And I stopped there. And it's about all the time I'm going to have. But I thought, Lord, you've given us an understanding in times of rebellion of what that far off country looks like. For every one of us in this room, now, I can't use a superlative. For most of us in this room, including myself, that far off country has a name. It has sights attributed to it. You can taste it. You can touch it. 
I started writing things down, just notes. You see right here on notes on the side. I just kept thinking this through that far off country. Mark, what is it for you? What is it for people that you know? I thought for some people, that far off country, as I think about the restore ministry, used to grow at the end of a vine. And that was found in a bottle. For others, it was cooked up in a lab. Now they're injecting it in their veins. For others, it lives at the end of a computer screen. And it's messing with their head. And I realized that in that moment, there are people today who are living in that type of rebellion. God wants us over here, but we're running as far west as we possibly can away from the Father. And so he goes down to Joppa. He encourages no problem, encounters no problems down there. He finds a boat, find, gets a ticket, finds a room on the boat. And the Bible says when the boat takes off, he goes to sleep. And I'm looking at that text and I'm thinking to myself, folks, we can't always determine whether or not um, we're in the will of God based on whether it's easy or not. It was pretty easy for him at that moment. But he was nowhere near in the will of God. And so God is using this storm. The Bible said in verse 4, the Lord sent a, a great wind, such a violent storm arose. The ship was threatening to break up. The people on the ship, they, were, they, were, um, they weren't god fearers, or at least Jehovah God. And they were just started casting lots. They're throwing dice, trying to figure out who on the boats has got the problem. Folks, I never recommend throwing dice to figure out the will of God. Ever. But let me tell you something. God will use anything when he chooses to, to get to the point and for his will to be done. He does in this situation. They come to Jonah, and the story goes, and basically, who are you? Where have you been? What did you do? It's like, oh, did I forget to tell you I'm a prophet? Did I forget to tell you that I live in the, na in the land of Israel? We're monotheistic. We have revelations from the one true God. Oh, yeah, that we are believing the God who made the earth and the land and the sky and the sea. We believe in the God who made that sea and is turning it up and makes you want to lose your lunch. Now, why is it that he didn't tell him all this? Because here's a man who's living in rebellion. Men and women hear me, and I'm writing, I'm thinking this through, that when we live in rebellion against God, we don't make very good witnesses for God. And this is right where he's at. And so in this moment, he goes long and he keeps going. And I thought to myself, and I have to, I'll have to close it this way, but I'm thinking of this. There's a storm brewing. And he had to come to a place where the guys on the boat are going, hey, what do we do with you? Imagine this. You, Jonah, you determine what we do with you. Jonah knew a sovereign God. God was in charge of the storm. He said, cast me off the boat and the waves will grow calm. And they did. Not without asking God, please don't, you know, don't hold this against us. But they ultimately did. The waves were calmed. And suddenly I believe that these pagan men who used to believe in the God suddenly began to worship or began to give sacrifice, the Bible says, to the God of Jehovah. Now, did that mean they absolutely 100% believed? We can't say that, but I've guaranteed something changed in these men. And I said this in the other service, and because of the, I want you to see the baptisms, this is a piece that came across my mind so powerfully. Right now in your life, you and myself could be walking through God-approved storms. Most times say, God would never let anything bad happen. You God, God is a God of love. But God allows things in our lives to get our eyes off of the tangible and the temporary and the transient and turns it towards the eternal and the sovereign. Turn to Him. The Bible talks about the cords of love that He desires to wrap around you and me and draw us to Himself. But when we won't come willingly, the Word of God talks about the cords of adversity that He will allow to be wrapped around us to move us to himself. Now, he still doesn't make that discernation for us. That's still our free will. But God loves you and me so much that sometimes self-God-approved storms will be allowed in your life and mine to turn our attention off of us onto him. And for Jonah, there came a point where he knew a sovereign God that he had to get out of the bow of the boat where he was sleeping and step to the edge of a boat. And at that moment, he had to say, look, this man had, courted, had charted a course for his life. I'm going to Joppa and I'm going to Tarshish. That's where I'm going, he said. God wanted me to go east. I'm going west. There came a time in his life where he had to literally step to the end of a boat. I don't know what side of the boat he was standing on. It doesn't matter. Pick a side of the boat. And he had to cast himself off of his prearranged, self-determined cruise, which most of us know all too well in our own lives. 
and cast ourselves into the deep of God's mercy and grace. Anybody ever experienced diving off into God's mercy and grace when you couldn't touch the bottom? Folks, I don't know if you don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to raise your hand. But if you've come to know Jesus Christ, that's exactly what you did. Because you couldn't touch the bottom. I remember in the second service, it caught me and I wrote it here. That when we sang the song, Oceans, they did such a beautiful job of that day. And, and the contents of it said, you call me out upon the water when feet may fail. And right there in the second service, I was singing there going, that's why so many people will refuse to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. Because I'm on my boat, and I know exactly where I'm going, but down here, I can't touch. And I'm out of control. And they simply won't jump. Won't jump. So I'm listening to that song through a whole different lens, and then it goes on to say, but grace abounds in deepest waters. Do you hear that? Grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand, oh God, will be my guide. I don't know what I'm going to face, but God, I trust you more than what I'm walking through right now. And where I'm heading is towards the rocks. Because every human-oriented destination cruise is heading towards the rocks. Jesus knows that. And so the one of the other pieces that caught me in the first service of that song, an ocean says, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. He was wandering to Tarshish. This was a prophet, a man of God. What about you and me? Where is it that Satan is baiting you and, 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 and um, arousing the desires in your life that's causing you to be tempted to move outside of his will? There had to come a place where even Jonah would say, I will jump into the deep. God, you're there. Take care. I, he didn't know what God was going to do. I believe he trusted. What about you and me? Do we come to a place where, you know what, God? I am willing to jump into the deep. Why? So that you will wrap your grace and mercy around me in such a way that, Lord, I, even though I'll be tempted to wander, I won't. I won't. That's what I'm praying for those that were baptized today, that they will continue to go deeper and deeper with the Lord and his mercy and grace, that although the memories of the past, all the circumstances of the present will cause you desire to try to get back on your own boat and do your own thing, but in that moment, God, I'm still going to trust you and I'm going to walk the way you asked me to walk. And so what I want to do before we see the video is I want you to just pray with me. I just want you to close your eyes and say, okay, and here's what I want you to imagine yourself. Where are you? Now I know you're in a church. That was the given. Where are you with God? Are you one of two places? I'll try to make it easy for you. Are you standing? Are you, let's three places. Are you sleeping in the bow of your own cruise ship where you're the captain and you've created your own itinerary? in your own destination. You know where you're going. You like it. You're so comfortable in it, you're asleep. Is that where you're at? Is there a God-approved storm in your life right now that in this moment things are so choppy that you're thinking, God, I know where this ship is heading. And you've moved to the end of the boat, but you are so fearful of what's coming that it's more comfortable if you live in your fear of the present than the unknown grace and mercy of God that's off the edge of that boat? Or have you been a person that you, years ago, weeks ago, maybe hours ago, literally leaped off the side and said, Jesus, Jesus. And you trusted your life to him, and when you hit that water, you experienced his grace and his mercy wrap around you, and you discovered that there in the waters is, as the Bible says, the rock of my salvation. And I'm asking you with your eyes closed and the heads bowed, where are you? And I want you to tell God where you're at today. Just simply say to him, God, here's where I'm at. I'll just be honest with you. Here's right where I'm at today. So Lord, I'm praying right now that you would speak into the lives of those that are here. I celebrate with those that are experiencing life upon a rock that's immovable. Even though the waters are churning, Lord, you're there and, you're sta and they're standing strong. And Father, I pray, I pray for those, Lord, who are still standing on the edge of the boat but have been unwilling 
to let go. And Father, I pray right now in the spirit of this place, because I believe your spirit is very alive and well here, that Lord God, that there would be an utter, uh, ushering uh, off the side of that boat. Father, I pray that people put their faith in Jesus Christ, your son, right now in this place. And if that's you, I'm speaking to you. I'm asking you, is this the time? Why wait? You know where that boat's heading. I encourage you right now to say, Jesus Christ, I need you. I need you more than anything. And I trust my life to you. And I jump off the side by faith into your arms. And God, may I experience your grace and your mercy for the Lord. I don't deserve it. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. And God, I'll walk with you beginning today. Help me to do it. And my friends, if you're the one that's still asleep in that boat, that nothing is being said this you, I'm asking you to ask yourself, what is it going to take? Why is it that I don't want to wake up? Why is it that I don't even want to wake up when I know the storm is there and I'm acting and living as if it doesn't exist? God, I'm praying that you would speak even to those because you would cherish every one of us. I'm asking you to do that, oh God. And so have your way in this place as we watch these baptisms and we celebrate through music. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you right now, the band is here in just a moment. We're going to share. I want you to watch these baptisms. Although they've been recorded, we're going to celebrate it. And if there's anybody in this room that's saying to themselves, I just jumped off the side of that boat by faith into the arms of Christ. And you don't care what you're wearing. You want to obey him in baptism. You come talk to us when we start singing. Really, any time between now and then. Let's watch this. Adam, for over a year, you've told us how much you wanted to be baptized, and we've had good conversations, and you've shown us, your mom and I, that you are ready, and we are very proud of you. Hmm. We didn't plan this for the record. <laughs> oh, Mom, it's been a privilege to be not only friend, but family, and it's been so exciting to watch you pursue God and you ask the tough questions and you know that you need Jesus and so you said yes and that is something like Will said like Daddy said we're so proud of you and we excited and we celebrate with you and if you look out there's a lot of people who got up a lot earlier than they normally do on Sunday to be here with you <laughs> so you keep asking those questions You guys hit the light. There you go. Anybody excited for John? Anybody excited for his wife and his child? That's what I celebrate. And may God sear this memory into your soul because you're obeying him today. You're saying, God, I want to honor you. Yeah, I'm going to get wet. What am I going to look like when I come up? Who cares, right? It's obedience. John, because of your commitment to Christ, we have the privilege of, <laughs> you hold me right there. <laughs> we have the privilege of baptizing you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dying to the old life, <laughs> rising to walk in brand new life in Christ. God bless you, bro. <laughs> Michaela.
known Michaela for almost the 15 years that Mountain View's been in existence. Little, what a blessing. Come on around. There you go. Anybody here celebrating with her? <laughs> Look around. That's family. That's family. And I want you to remember that. God adores you. And all that stuff that you said you couldn't tell anybody else about, he already knew. And he still did that for you. That's the depth of his love for you. You know how much I love you and your family, Michaela, because of your faith in Jesus Christ. And you're willing to be obedient to him. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Dying to the old life and walking in new life. <laughs> God bless you. You are so loved. Okay. Mm. It's not cold. We warm it up. We warm it up. Once again, is anyone excited for Ashley? This is an act of obedience for you. In the Bible, we understand that understanding can wait, but obedience can't. You said, Lord, I'm, I'm compelled to do this. What God wants to show you and reveal to that is simply comes after obedience oftentimes. All the brokenness of the past is under the blood of Calvary. That's how powerful it is. As a Christian, you walk in the authority of Christ and you walk in his power. Power over past memories, power over things that are going on right now, and over the things you fear of the future. That's what you walk in. You are his child. And because of that, I have the privilege of baptizing you, Ashley, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dying to the old life, rising to walk in newness of life. God bless you. <laughs> and I challenge you now, are there others? I'm not going to let what happened in the first service not happen here if somebody says yes. We're 11 o'clock, but I don't care. There are individuals. He's seen it better than I could. <laughs> As we sing, I'm just challenging you. Talk to your father. He adores you. And I don't know the brokenness that you walk in here with, the challenges or the crisis. I don't know. He does. He's here. If there's anybody here who's jumped off the side of that boat saying, you know what, I just want to obey him. That's fine. Come talk to us. If not, enjoy worshiping him through song. Brother, let's do this. Stand with us.
This is Kimberly. Kimberly says I'm all in. And I know she has a story she's going to tell. And I already know. Matter of fact, I know there's a message for at least one in this room that I know personally. But I believe it's beyond that. So Kimberly, share where you've been, who Christ is to you, and why you're standing here today. So I've been going here for four weeks now. <laughs> Um, I have been in a broken walk with Jesus for a long time, and I have been a really good fake Christian. Um, I'm one of those people who paints a really pretty picture on the outside, and nobody would know I was struggling, except for that guy right there. Um, that's my husband. <laughs> um, I have struggled with faithfulness in our marriage for like four years now. He knows we're good. Um, and last year we actually decided to separate. Um, and it was a really tough time for us. So we had a big blow up thing and decided to just go all in and really give it our all for our two girls and for our families who love each other so much and for each other because he's really like the most awesome guy ever and has like never done anything wrong to me. Um, and we went to Family Life Weekend to remember together and it was just such a game changer. Um, and we came back a new couple and new people and I wanna be God's first, his second, and I wanna be the best mom and the best wife and I just wanna go all in. I don't wanna fake it anymore. And Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Every day. Every day, in every way. Come on, let's go. Okay. in there. Mark Batterson wrote a book years ago called All In. If you've never read it, I encourage you to go to Amazon and pick it up. A phrase in that book he said, and it's a phrase you used a moment ago, I want to be all in. That's jumping off the side into the depth of his mercy and grace. And the phrase in the boat book said, I'm all in and all out for the all in all. And that's the only way to live. All in and all out for the all in all. And because of that commitment, Josh gets a chance to baptize you today in the name of Jesus. For my wife and I, marriage ministry is our heart. So to be here hearing the restoration, the symbolism of marriage, of, of that bond of Christ to, the, to his church, 
and the restoration. Ah, this is this is what's about I'm excited. So, Kimberly, it's a privilege. have a blessed week. Go in the peace and the love of Christ.